Okay, so first off, I've got a little bit of an origin story for my video about this mod I did. Started out a year ago when I bought the S1700. It was a great quad. It taught me how to fly. It had altitude hold. Um, it was just a great beginner quad. It had good flight times. It was rugged. Uh, I wound up modding it like crazy. I wound up flying it till the arms fell off. Uh, the controller was pretty decent. Uh, like I said, just a good learning controller. But um, as I got better and better, I wanted to move up to Acro. And I wanted a good, dedicated FPV platform to fly off of. So I went to the Blade Nano QX2. And I picked it because I liked how it looked. It, to me, it's important for a quad to just look good, like a quad that you want to just pick up and fly. And a lot of quads just don't have that kind of visual flair to it. So this one did. has built-in camera, 25 milliwatt tiltable uh, six millimeter motors and it actually handled much better than any quad I'd ever flown before. It was much more precise compared to the Sky Viper. I bought a DXE uh, transmitter. It's only a $50 transmitter. I wouldn't recommend it as a transmitter. If I was going to do it all over again I wouldn't have got it. But I just want to say that it, uh, it served its purpose as far as giving me a better controller. But if you're really trying to move up the tree, it's not the one I would suggest getting. Another problem, well, okay, the first problem I had about the Blade QX2 was its flight times. It uses this little 500 milliamp hour battery, and you really can't go bigger because the props are tiny. It just doesn't, and it's only pushing um, six millimeter motors. So there's a, a limitation to how much weight you can add to it. So like I basically I really like the quad I still like it it's still a great quad it flies great it's quick it's agile and it has acro acro I pretty much uh, I basically just got to where I wanted to move on I wanted to retain the the good long flight times of the S1700 the durability of the S1700 and have acro and FPV. And I kind of racked my brains for a while and I finally decided to just go out and buy a Blade Nano QX2 flight controller. And I was like, dimension wise, it should fit in here, no problem. And all I got to do is plug in the motors hook up the camera and I should be good to go. The biggest difference is, is, it, is the gear drives on this. this is, that's a big difference between the two quads. So the motors had to be plugged in in a different configuration in terms of the clockwise and counterclockwise. Um, problem number one was the battery. I needed to use the bigger Sky Viper batteries which because I had a bunch of them they're 650 milliamp hours, so larger capacity for longer flight times. And so I had to change the plug to the red JST plug from the JST 2.0 that you get on the Blade QX2. And I was happy. Um, that, worked, that, was, that was the easiest part of it. The hard part was getting the 7 millimeter motor plugs to fit into the 7 millimeter motor um, plug-in on the flight controller. So if you look at the flight controller here, where these motors plug in, all these, the motor plugs and the outlet that you plug it into are always going to be in proportionate to the size of the brushed motor it's connected to. So if you've got a six millimeter motor, you're going to have a small plug-in. If you have a seven millimeter motor, the plug-in is going to be a little bit bigger. And um, obviously, you go up to eight millimeter. You can even have a bigger plug-in. So the problem I had was there was a little bit too much slack where the motors actually hook in or connect to the flight controller. They're just a little bit too big. And because of these seven millimeter motors and the corresponding larger size, they were they kept popping out whenever I crashed. So what I did was is I, that's what those globs are. I took hot glue and I just put globs over 
each one just to hold it in. And I've I've crashed it and landed it pretty hard a bunch of times since then, and they've held up just fine. I've never had one pop out again. So it took a little bit of English there. Unfortunately, because I hot glued and that bulge of hot glue is poking out, I can't use the battery tray anymore. So I just use some uh, Easy Lock and attach it to the bottom and it takes care of it just fine. It's pretty strong too, surprisingly strong. Um, so that basically wrapped up the, the main portion of it. The second part was getting the camera installed. So what I did was I cut a hole in the top of the canopy and then I fed out the wire that was pre-installed on the Blade QX2 out and then I connected the all-in-one camera which has a switchable uh, transmitter on it from 25 milliwatt up to 200 milliwatt and then I just plugged it in and then I hot glued the camera itself to the canopy and then I'm, I put globs of hot glue on it to where the wire if you crash hard when you have tension on that wire it can rip the wires right out of the back of the camera so I put those globs of hot glue so there would be a different anchoring point to where if I did have a hard crash the wires would pull on that anchoring point as opposed to the back of the camera. I was just trying to reinforce it. So that's it. I mean that's really all it took. It, it wasn't a huge endeavor. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to skip to some DVR footage I took in FPV. Alright, here we go. Uh, in your upper left, we've got stabilized flight mode, which is basically the same limitations imposed by the Sky Viper flight controller. Now I'm using the Blade Anno QX2 for it. In the bottom right, I've got it in acro mode. And basically that takes the, the reins off and lets you control pitch uh, as much as you want, pretty much. And it doesn't auto-stabilize for you. I'm new to Acro. I've actually gotten better since I made this video, but um, I'm not going to be really showing off. Uh, the rates are conservative on the default settings of the Spectrum DXE and the Blade QX2, so it's not really conducive for doing flips. You can do flips, but they kind of resemble loops, <laughs> if, I, if that's a good description for it. Um, so these are my observations about all this right here basically my goal was to get better flight times like I was getting around a five minute flight time in the Blade QX2 in complete stock form uh, putting that flight controller in here I've got geared props I've got a larger capacity battery and my flight times are actually shorter now, I don't know if that's a user error, something I'm doing wrong on my part, if there's some kind of uh, program I, I could have done better to make it uh, fly for longer periods of time, I don't know. Um, I don't know if the Blade QX2, maybe it doesn't use a low voltage cut, cut off, maybe it just cuts you off after a certain amount of time. It usually goes by voltage, so that's just my ignorance talking there, I'm not sure. But whatever the case is, um, I didn't get the flight times I wanted. It still flies great, don't get me wrong, and it's a rugged platform. And, I mean, everything more or less worked. So, I'm not really complaining about that. It's just mystifying to me how uh, the flight times didn't hold up to what I was expecting. So, a little bit of disappointment. Well, okay, a lot of disappointment. I mean, that was really my main reason for doing this. So... I don't want to completely um, discourage anybody from trying this. I'm just saying that sometimes when you mess with the ingredients, you don't always get the exact result that you want. Um, but I will say, it's still fun to fly, don't get me wrong, and, and I've got a lot more of the batteries that fit uh, this connector and for this size of quad than I do for the uh, Blade QX2. So, um, yeah, it's just like I said, it, it's, I have no idea why it worked out this way. I really, I can't explain it. Maybe it was windier, I don't know, but even, 
I was really looking for between eight and ten minute flight times, and to not get anywhere near that was kind of disappointing. So, um, yeah, so I have a few conclusions to draw about uh, the results of this, and I'm going to go over those in the next little bit here coming up as soon as I get landed here, which should be right about now. Okay, now time for positives and negatives and what I learned from it. First off, there was no soldering. It was an easy build process. Acro worked. Frame swapping can be done. So if you have any quad you've ever looked at, you're like, man, I love the body on that quad. I loved it if it had acro and FPV and whatnot. It can be done. It, It's there. So don't let... Uh, the limitations of a toy quad, if it happens to have a really cool frame, stop you because um, it's definitely something that's doable, even at my skill level. Okay, and now for negatives. The biggest negative by far is I didn't improve the flight time. That was really what I was gunning for. I wanted longer flight times, more practice time, more time in the air, less time swapping batteries. Second big problem was the DXC transmitter. Uh, it's only $50. That's relatively affordable. That's really more in my budget range. But if you want to use that particular type of capability as far as the hobby grade sticks, um, all the switches, you know, flight modes, all that kind of stuff, I will not recommend the DXE because it is a real bear to figure out how to program rates into it. I just, I tried several times and just basically gave up. So I cannot recommend the DXC transmitter unless you're just really wanting to fly very basic stuff and you're not worried about rates and you don't want to like move deeper into the hobby. So maybe that's good if you're really not looking to get very far and just want a good pro style transmitter. But I personally wouldn't recommend it. But I do have a few suggestions going forward if you want to try this and maybe you'll get better results. Okay, so if I was going to do it all over again, including my transmitter selection, here's what I'd do first. I would go to banggood.com. I'd go get the F3 Evo brushed flight controller for $25. I would choose the FlySky transmitter, or I'm sorry, FlySky receiver. And this flight controller is actually made for 8mm brushed motors, but it should work for what we're going to do and it has tons of options on it um, it has all but an OSD so it's really great it's got acro rate modes pretty much all you need um, after I got it I would get a FlySky i6 oh what is it yeah FlySky i6 What's really important about it, apart from being very popular as a receiver option on Banggood, is it has this digital display right here. So when you want to reprogram it and you want to set your rate modes, you can do it. Unlike the DXE, which you have to plug into the computer, download a file program, and uh, it just, eh, don't do it, guys. But I would, uh, this actual transmitter has been recommended by a bunch of different people so who are more knowledgeable than me so I would recommend it for sure and finally I would get the coolest quad out right now one of the most popular quads in the past year the Isheen E58 it does use seven millimeter motors but they should should fit into the eight millimeter plug-ins on our flight controller so that's what I would do if I could do it all over again that's what I would do because I would have such a cool looking quad and I would have all of the flight capabilities I'd be happy to give up the um, sketchy 720p video and uh, all the lighting and stuff which maybe could be wired into it I don't know um, but yeah that's what I would do and uh, just in closing I want to say don't don't, uh, don't let my video necessarily discourage you 
I want to point out that I was able to do it. I, wa I didn't get the re exact results I wanted um, because really for me it was all about better flight times. But like I said, it, it can work. You can put uh, vastly superior flight controllers into toy grade quads that oftentimes in my opinion look much better. And I would say try it and uh, let me know how it goes because uh, I think it's really cool. So anyway, that's all I got for today, and thanks for watching.